A shelter within a shelter is often called a, a core shelter in a house or a basement. Uh, people that uh, know what to do can often uh, cut the radiation dose they would receive to uh, one quarter of what they would otherwise get in the same place. Here we're in the corner of a, of a, of a basement which gives good shielding on two sides. There's earth up on the other side here, the other side of that wall. And what uh, has been done here, uh, a substantial table and uh, various shielding materials uh, are being placed, have been placed on top of it. I want to illustrate first uh, how people would crawl in. You can have a view, there's two ladies and a boy uh, in, in this core shelter. And they're going to also illustrate how in hot weather they can uh, keep tolerably cool. But first, let's talk about the shielding. If uh, earth, which is the standard material, you might say, has a uh, halving thickness of about three and a half inches. In other words, three and a half inches of earth will cut the radiation dose that goes through it to half. Uh, water is about 60 percent of that uh, effectiveness, and uh, that means it takes uh, about five inches of water to uh, cause uh, that decrease. Here uh, we're illustrating how you can get a, a good water shielding uh, uh, in a simple way. Most any substantial box, these are the top and the bottom of a box placed inside of each other. And if you, if you take ordinary uh, trash or uh, leaf bags and the big kind, and uh, put one inside of the other, and then put it in the in the box. Uh, this makes a a good container. And uh, here you have about ten inches uh, of water when this is almost full. That means that's two having thicknesses, which means that the first uh, one will uh, uh, cut the radiation. Uh, in half, and the next will cut that in half. In other words, that's only one-fourth of the radiation that's coming down from the uh, roof and through the uh, building will go through and reach the people uh, covered by water like that. Earth, it even takes less. We'll assume these, these are, would be uh, filled, some of them with earth. But suppose it's freezing outside or the people haven't got any way of uh, carrying earth, uh, most any heavy material such as, as books or uh, canned uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, they, they're even a little better than water, a little, little more dense. And in other words, here you have uh, better than a halving thickness for radiation coming down. All these materials certainly can be used. Wood is only about half as, this is light spruce, it's only about half as effective as water. It would take uh, roughly 10 inches of wood like that to give the same protection as uh, five inches of water. A really serious problem in uh, crowding into a small core shelter like this is heat. Uh, if uh, it's warm and uh, people can't just, just stick it out, the first thing that hits them is, is just the body heat gets so high. Uh, if they know something about directional fanning, of course they can't use a fan as big as this, but that motion, which is described in another part of the videotape. Uh, however, here's just, uh, I, I didn't have any tape to put them together, so just tied them together with a piece of string, a piece of uh, bed sheet or, or, or shirt material tied. And you see the same motion, push it out and then bring it back, and you, you can cause uh, a good flow of air. As you will see, uh, People would strive to br get the air coming in at their feet and going out high. Then, of course, as, as the, their body heat heats the air, it would rise naturally and it'd be pumping the air in the same direction that it naturally is already going at a slow rate. However, if it's really hot in the, in the basement, uh, that natural ventilation just isn't effective. Uh, here, here's a little fan. and. Uh, she can start uh, uh, fanning out. We'll have to see it from the other side. But there's a small 
opening left uh, on the other side, and uh, that way you can get an airflow even when this is would be largely closed to increase the protection factor. And repeating, you, you can get about a protection factor uh, in this simple way of about four. Your uh, dose while in there would only be one-fourth of what it would be in the same place uh, without uh, this protection. This is extremely important because, for example, if uh, we right here were one hour uh, flight time, that is, of the fallout from an explosion, and the, uh, in seven hours, it's down to uh, one-tenth of the dose rate. So the most deadly uh, and most of the dose, if you can stick it out uh, in a, a shelter like this, you can make up to a considerable extent for the fact that you don't have a proper shelter. Here we're in a basement. This, these, uh, it's more difficult if you're in a house without a basement and you're caught unexpectedly, there's no shelter nearby to go to. But uh, if you're just bringing all the heavy objects in, in, the, uh, in the house, uh, books, uh, uh, most uh, anything other than light trunks, even that would help. And you can uh, get right in the middle of the house, we're talking about where there's no basement, and uh, make this protection all around a table, uh, you can get the same protection. Well, let's look at the other side of the, uh, where, where the air comes out. To be able to cut your radiation dose to one-fourth during the period, which is the first few hours uh, after a fallout arrives, uh, this is a tremendous uh, life-saving opportunity. And uh, uh, this simple method uh, should be learned by everyone that doesn't have a good shelter already. Well, come on out. Mission accomplished. Uh, we'll get air passage out of the way. And I think you would agree if your life depended on it, you, could, you, you can uh, stay under there for at least seven hours, and people have stayed in a worse cramped situation than that for days. <laughs>